What's up geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video and today Look at that headline right there. This article is hilarious. This article is full of lies Misrepresentation and complete fabrication. They're just making stuff up because they're not gonna be held accountable for it uh, It's unbelievable and yes geeks and gamers is mentioned in there, which I appreciate by the way I also appreciate an opportunity to uh, Call you out on your lies Rise of Skywalker pre-sales record proves fanboy cut was an empty threat. Yeah, the, the records there to just, you know, just like the solo records. Uh, yet, we have long-range tracking where it says the Rise of Skywalker uh, opening weekend range 185 to 225. That would mean it will probably be the worst uh, opening weekend of the sequel trilogy movies. Again, that's just a projection. I've said already I think it's going to have a great opening weekend because of course it is because it's Star Wars. Um, you know, and the long range domestic total is a really solid. That's definitely solid. Um, again, this this nonsense about these records and the boycott. And, like, who called for a boycott exactly? Like, I, I, I haven't called for a boycott. I've said I'm going to see the movie. If people want to boycott it, they have the right to boycott it. If they don't want to boycott it, they don't have to boycott They could do whatever they want with their money. Like, the fandom menace as a whole, that has we don't call for anything. It's just a different group of people. Different beliefs, different views, different opinions. Some of them are choosing the boycott. Some of them aren't. I don't know what they're doing. I don't speak for them. And if you want to put this to Geeks and Gamers, well, Geeks and Gamers has never supported a, boy supported a boycott um, because Geeks and Gamers is a very diverse group of people in thought. And we will have an official review for The Rise of Skywalker, just like we had an official review for uh, Captain Marvel, which was a favorable review, by the way. Nobody wants to talk about that. None of the people that want to accuse Geeks and Gamers of all this... If you have a problem with me, then name me. But when you name Geeks and Gamers as the problem, then you're only showing how stupid and ignorant you truly are. Geeks and Gamers gave Captain Marvel a positive review. Someone on my staff wrote an article, went saw the movie, wrote an article, and gave it a positive review. Look it up if you don't believe me. But you aren't worried about context or details. The bad guy on the internet, the one who's all talking on the camera and screaming from his $75 uh, webcam and pool house, he's so mean, yet you don't recognize that I have a staff and a group of people that completely disagree with me and say and believe whatever they want. None of you can say that because you live in your own echo chamber. But let's jump into this. Um... So, yada, 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 it's talking about this, you know, the Rise of Skywalker breaking records previously held by Endgame, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's talking about some stuff with Jeremy Johns. It's talking about some stuff with The Last Jedi. Uh, Jeremy Johns has a great video, by the way. Not all online critics, however, have been so articulate or fair. Many YouTubers with large followings, including geeks and gamers, Ethan Van Skyper and Grace Randolph took issue with the film pandering to social justice warriors and leftist political agendas by putting women and racial minorities front and center. That is a lie. That is a complete and total lie. Um, we have said many times it's not about the fact that they have women and minorities in it. Because if that was the problem, none of us would like Star Wars in the first place, moron. Uh, the problem is, is they're using women and minorities uh, to sacrifice the story so they can virtue signal. They don't care about women and minorities. They don't. They only care about using their race and their gender to make themselves look better, all while sacrificing story. That is what we've said. But hey, who's here for truth, right? Let's just make a bunch of crap up. Also... Also, piggybacking off other people's talking points, those with intense political biases convincing themselves the majority of fans agree with them. This led to the fandom menace, a group of particularly aggressive fans who trolled all Star Wars related content. As a result, the online discourse surrounding both The Last Jedi and the upcoming Star Wars project became almost militant. Some YouTubers and online critics attacked everything Lucasfilm did, regardless of what it was. Meanwhile, a lot of misses information was spread due to either a lack of research or deliberate lying. It's interesting that you use that 
line right there. A lot of misinformation was spread due to either a lack of research or deliberate lying. What do we get to next? Interesting, interesting indeed. The group attacked anyone uh, they blamed for what they saw as Star Wars failure. From Kelly Marie Tran to Ryan Johnson to Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy. Tran, in particular, got it rough. She even deleted her Instagram account after Vietnam fans relentlessly accused her of ruining Star Wars. After a while, there was only one solution the fandom menace believed would work to punish the franchise for failing them. Boycott all future Star Wars films. Well, again, let's go back to this again. A lot of misinformation was spread due to either a lack of research or deliberate lying. And then you deliberately lie. Where is the evidence? I know that's a scary word for uh, far left people spreading propaganda. Where is the evidence that Kelly Marie Tran deleted her Instagram because of attacks from the fans. Specifically, the fandom menace on top of that. But just let's just leave it up to fans. Where are these attacks? Show me the evidence. Show me the proof. Show me where Kelly Marie Tran said this. You can't because it doesn't exist. Because the media has made up this lie because they chose to use Kelly Marie Tran a very sweet and charming human being, they decided to use her to push their narrative, which is exactly what Lucasfilm is doing, which is exactly what most people in the fandom menace have been calling Lucasfilm out for. You are using Kelly Marie Tran. You are using her sweetness. You are using her gender and her race to virtue signal. There's no proof of any of this. As a matter of fact, when this news broke, when I heard about it, and unfortunately I didn't do my research, I reacted very, very angrily when I heard about it because I was like, who is attacking Kelly Marie Tran? You ought to go to hell. Anybody going after this poor woman, she's a sweetheart. I reacted based on that information. And guess what? There was no information. It was nothing but a media hoax to virtue signal and you're still running with that narrative because you don't actually care about these people you only care what you can get out of them now as far as the all future star wars films being boycotted by the fandom menace who who i mean i'm one of the uh, geeks and gamers has one of the prominent fandom menace channels am i boycotting it no it's world-class bullshitters? No. Now, it's Ethan Van Skyver? No. Who are you talking about? So, now, I mean, I know, again, this is this thing called evidence. And, uh, oh, oh, well, I heard a guy who had 25 followers, and he hashtag fandom menace, meaning that was the movement. That's the logic behind people that want to create this uh, lie about the fandom menace, because one guy with... I don't know, two followers on Twitter, and he does the hashtag Phantom Menace, he must speak for the entire group. Never mind the actual video evidence of people like myself saying things, no, 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 that's not good enough. No, but we found a random Twitter account that used the hashtag, therefore this speaks for all of these thousands of people that have very different opinions and very different backgrounds. They look different, they sound different, and they think different. But because this guy on Twitter hashtagged Fandom Menace, that speaks for the entire movement. This means you're losing. When you do that, this means you're losing. This means you're having to find anything to try and discredit. Why not find something in my video, something I've said? Hold me accountable for my words. Hold us accountable for the things we've said in videos. No, no, no. But hey, a random Twitter account with uh, a blank profile picture, that speaks for the whole movement. That just means you can't find anything on us to push your narrative. Um, so the rest of this is just stupid. Um, again, when it comes down to the boycott, you as an individual can do whatever you want with your money. You don't answer to me. You don't answer to anyone but your family. I have no control over that. 
when I did not go see Solo, I said the same thing. And we had people like Brian Young making up lies, saying that I led the boycott. No, I didn't. When Captain Marvel came out. Yes, I personally boycotted. And guess what? Now, with Solo, I was blamed for tanking Solo because I led the boycott. Even though I didn't lead the boycott, I was blamed for tanking Solo. Okay? I didn't actually boycott it. So I did actually boycott Captain Marvel and it made a billion dollars. So am I maybe just not as powerful as you think I am? Maybe I'm just some dude on the internet with opinions. And maybe, maybe Solo failed because The Last Jedi was terrible. And maybe it was a bad idea to even have that movie. Maybe it had nothing to do with me. Just like Captain Marvel making a billion dollars had nothing to do with me. I'm just a dude who has opinions, just like every single person. Maybe, just maybe, I'm not as powerful as you think I am. I appreciate you thinking I am, but I'm really not. Now, we can continue to talk about this, but at the end of the day, you don't have any evidence. You don't have any evidence to support the claims that you're making. All you have is your lies and your misrepresentation of everything that the Phantom Menace stands for and represents. The Phantom Menace doesn't have an opinion. The Phantom Menace doesn't have an outline. The Phantom Menace doesn't have a goal. The fa Well, I, I take that back. The Phantom Menace has a goal to show that we are tired of Hollywood pushing real-world politics into our entertainment. We want our entertainment to come first, not political agendas. Outside of that, People in the Phantom Menace, there are people that like The Last Jedi. There are people that hate it. Most hate it because most people hate the movie. That's just demographics. Most people don't like that movie. It's not a good movie. But there are people in the Phantom Menace, there are people at like Geeks and Gamers that like The Last Jedi. And there's nothing wrong with that. People in the Phantom Menace have their own opinions. They're going to do what they want. Some will boycott. Others won't. That's just how it goes. It's not... It's just basically... It's just a big, huge group of people that get along, even through our disagreements. And that's why you hate us. Because there's nothing out there like that in the social justice world. The social justice world means you have to think a certain way, you have to speak a certain way, you have to think and say certain things, or you will be kicked out of the cool kids club. They will excommunicate you for wrong think in a second. The fandom menace doesn't do that. Absolutely doesn't. So anyway... That's it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you very much for checking it out. I appreciate it. Um, shout out to Comic Book Resources for lies, for spreading manipulation, for inventing things, and for repeating this lie told over and over and over again. What I will challenge Comic Book Resources on, uh, and this Anthony guy, find the video on Geeks and Gamers or even beyond Geeks and Gamers. Find me the prominent YouTube channel. Find me the prominent voice that has had anything negative to say about Kelly Marie Tran as a human being. Find it. Tell me about it. Send it to me on Twitter, and I will roast the living hell out of this person. Again, a prominent voice. And when I say prominent, give me somebody that's got a few thousand subs on, on YouTube. Don't find me some random Twitter account that nobody knows the real, it doesn't even have a real name. Don't find me some screenshot of a Rotten Tomatoes comment on some fake account. Find me the prominent voice that has ever said anything racist or sexist about Kelly Marie Tran as a human being, and I will roast them on this channel that you think is all powerful, but it really isn't. Let me know. I'll be waiting. I don't think you can provide it, though, because it doesn't exist. Have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video, and we will talk to you later. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy from GeeksAndGamers.com, and if you're a fan of Geeks and Gamers, please go to our website, visit our merchandise store. We have t-shirts, hoodies, hats, beanies, tank tops, and in the very near future, we're going to have many more products for you to choose from. So thank you for the support. We appreciate it. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later.